This non-rich anti-fog unit might be the best $50 you will ever spend on your airsoft gear. Is this just a blatant ripoff from XFOG that's been on the market for years or there's more to the story? Let's find out. If you play airsoft, you know that foggy goggles can ruin the whole experience for you. There are tons of anti-fog solutions on the market that work with varying results, but I personally haven't found one that works great in heat, cold, high humidity, and just lasts for a whole day. And if it's not the fog that's ruining your day, there are times where you're sweating so much that there's literal sweat drops running down inside of the lenses. But that's until I tried these two, the anti-fog unit from Norwich and the X-Fog. Just like X-Fog, the Norwich anti-fog unit has a small fan that draws air through the bottom, through the tubes and into the goggles, through this magnetic attachment point, like so. And this just blows fresh air into the goggles and prevents fog from forming, and it even stops some of the sweat that's building up on your face. This means that you can easily run this in even a high humidity environment and it still won't fog. Before we get further into the video, you need to know a few things. I'm a product designer and I was directly involved in developing this project for Norwich. But I no longer work for Norwich, and this just means that I know the product inside out and know why certain decisions were made. Norwich did send me this unit for testing purposes, but no money exchanged hands and they have no say over what makes into this video. Everything I say in this video is my honest opinion about this product. You will find the affiliate link for this product down in the description below if you wish to support the channel, but keep in mind this is not our primary source of income. Our main business is making awesome products for airsoft industry and we also make upgrade parts for Norwich brand replicas that you can check out down below in the description. This just means that it's literally in our interest to point out flaws in Norwich products. So let's see what's in the box. You get the anti-fog unit itself. You also get the magnetic mounting system that attaches to your goggles. You get two pieces of silicone tubing that you need to cut to your own length. You also get a USB-C cable, we're in 21st century. You also get a punch that's used to make a hole in your goggles. And finally, obviously you get instructions and two pieces of Velcro that are used to mount the anti-fog unit itself to the hat or helmet. The Norwich anti-fog unit costs $50 or 50 euros, depending on what you're based in. And that's honestly really good, that's a super good deal. The XFOG directly from XFOG costs 65 to 70 dollars depending on which package you get. But for example, here in Europe, where we're based, if you want to get hands on this one, it costs north of 100 euros, which is honestly insane. So in, in this regards, depending on where you're based, price could be a significant factor when purchasing either of these. Norwich opted to go with a magnetic mounting system that should work with most full seal goggles that have rubber frames, just like these Pyramax V2Gs that he also sells on the store. This makes it very easy to take the goggles and or your headgear on and off and attach it quite easily when you decide to put it back on. If you're wondering about compatibility with like regular glasses like these, it's not really designed for, but I'm sure someone will make it work and share some either 3D printed parts online or just make a solution for it. I would just give it a few months and there's probably gonna be a mounting solution for those as well. Let's go ahead and just do a fresh install on a new pair of goggles. Uh, so let's just get rid of these. So to mount these, all you need is use the included punch to cut a hole in the goggles. You'll also probably need a surface to do the punching on and also a hammer. You'll want to take the goggles and use the punch and try to align it somewhere in the middle and just hit it once. Get rid of that plastic bit. So we have a nice hole in the top. Then you go ahead and use the magnetic attachment point. Keep in mind that these channels are supposed to be pointing towards the actual glass itself. Just make sure that the frame is fully seated in and the mount is solidly in place. Now the hose mount can click on top and all we need to do now is cut the hoses to the correct length and we're pretty much done. So the anti-fog unit itself mounts using Velcro. So to mount it on your head, you'll need either a boonie that has already a Velcro patch, like the regular Norwich Gen 2 boonies, and they'll all come with these. And it also has two small cutouts on the sides where the tubes pass through. Or you can also use a cap with the Velcro, or you can obviously stick this to a helmet as well. 
Right now, the 3D Gilly Boonies, the Norwich cells, doesn't come with either the Velcro or the cutouts, but uh, obviously you can easily retrofit and just glue on the Velcro on the back, make the cuts on the boonie on the sides by yourself. But Norwich said that they will be updating the 3D boonies in the future. I feel like mounting is the one area where they can improve in the future by providing some more universal mounting solution, for example, like a a GoPro style like band that you could use with a beanie, or maybe you could exchange these goggle straps for a different one that already has a Velcro on it. So you could attach it directly to the goggles. When it comes to the X-Fog on the goggle side of things, they don't actually provide any solution. What you're supposed to do is just use these tubes and stick them inside the goggles. While it works, it's not a great solution. It's quite cumbersome and it's not very comfortable to have tubes squished in between the frames of the goggles. So that's definitely one area they're lacking in. But one thing that I actually love about XFOG is that they have this option to purchase it together with a T-band. It's a GoPro-like strap that you can put on the head. And that means that you can easily run it with pretty much anything you want. The Norwich anti-fog unit feels nice, has some rubber buttons to keep the water out, and it just overall has that military look that, for example, looks perfectly fine on the helmets. As you can see, it feels and fits very nicely. On the other hand, the X-Fog seems a bit unfinished and more like a prototype when put next to the AFU. The materials are supposed to be top-notch, but overall look feels outdated and leaves a lot to be desired. Size-wise, both of these units are very similar. The Norwich Anti-Fog unit looks a bit thicker, but it's actually the same thickness as the X-Fog on the side. Width-wise, the Anti-Fog unit is definitely smaller than the X-Fog. And the height-wise, if you take into account the X-Fog tube depth, it's basically the same height, but the Norwich one overall, due to the curved outside surfaces, actually look a little bit smaller. Weight-wise, both of these devices are very similar. The X-Fog comes in at around 95 grams, while the Norbridge anti-fog unit comes in around 110 grams. On the top, you'll find the power adjustment dial that to my knowledge is the same one that's used in Baofeng radios. So you can get a feel for it if you have one at home and it basically turns the device on and then you can gradually increase the power to the maximum. This allows the device to be operated very easily even when it's on the back of your head and even if you're using gloves. Right next to it, there's a turbo button which turns on full power for 30 seconds. This means you can basically run it on the lowest setting for most of the time, but for example, if there's some fog starting to form, you can always just hit the turbo button and it should clear up. To be honest, I always run it on the lowest setting anyways, but I know that there are people out there that are definitely fogging a lot more than me. So it's always a nice to have. On the side, you will find a rubber button that once pressed will show you the status of the charge. So red means it's almost out. Yellow will mean it's 50% charge and green is fully charged. And on the bottom, you will find a rubber seal that protects the USB-C connector for charging. On the X-Fog, the way you control the device is by using this on-off button, which first turns on the device on the high power mode, then cycles through to the medium and then the low setting, and then again, completely turns it off. The button itself is very flush and not really tactile. <laughs> if you're wearing gloves, good luck finding the button and trying to feel if you actually clicked it or not. Even during filming this video, I accidentally pressed it a bunch of times already. So it's just not a great design for the purpose. There have been several cases where it's actually been super frustrating. For example, if you want to just quickly turn the device off to listen for some distant sounds. On the AFU, you can just quickly turn off the dial and it's off. Whereas on the X-Fog, you actually have to quickly cycle through whatever setting you have set and then hope for the best that you actually land on the off setting and don't turn it on again. Next to the power button, you will find two LEDs, which are single color, one for charging and one for the battery status. But honestly, I always forget what the indicator means because they're sometimes flashing, they're sometimes turned off, sometimes they're glowing red. It's honestly quite confusing if you don't have the manual next to you. And on the bottom, you will find a micro USB with honestly quite a big gap around it. There's a good potential that you can get some dust and water inside the hole if you're not being careful. To illustrate the power differences between these two, we'll try to illustrate that with some flour. I'm not sure how it's gonna go, but we'll give it a shot. So we'll start off with the x unit on the highest power setting and see if that works.
Well, by the looks of it, it's not really doing anything. We'll now try to do the same thing with the Norwich anti-fog unit. We'll start off with the smallest setting and then gradually ramp up and see if anything happens. So on the smallest setting, you can see there is some movement happening, but very little. So we'll try to ramp it up a little bit. Actually, this is doing something. So we'll increase the power a little bit. Now we're on the max regular setting. And as you can clearly see, there's stuff happening. And we can start to blow the flower away. And if we push the turbo mode, woo, there we go. Whee! So this clearly shows that the Norwich anti-fog unit is more powerful in case there was any question about it. So in case this matters to you, this is definitely the one to go for. Both the anti-fog unit and the X-fog are barely audible, but keep in mind they're not silent. If you're trying to listen for some distant footsteps, there's a chance you might need to turn them off temporarily. We'll now do a quick sound test for both of these units and see which is louder using the sound meter. We'll leave the timestamps for the different settings for both of these devices down in the video description, so you can quickly jump between them and listen for yourself. User repairability is also a big factor for me when buying a new device. I'm curious to see what we find inside of these. So without further ado, let's crack these open and let's see what's inside. We'll start with the X-Fog as this has been on the market for already five years and many consider this as the original. So to open up the X-Fog, you actually need just two tools, T6 Torx and something to pry and uh, hope for the best that you don't break it. So the adapter can be easily removed. It's just a piece of plastic that splits the fan shroud in two separate channels, which then slides into this channel. So the only way to open up this is by prying the lid open. As you can see, I've done that already, and there are quite a bit of scuff marks. You pretty much need to pray and just force it, as the unit itself is entirely glued across the perimeter together. So yeah, just good luck opening this. This is definitely not very user repairable. That is probably why we haven't really seen pictures of the inside of the X-Fog out in the wild. On the inside of the unit, you can see the blower style fan, the PCB, which controls the power and the battery. And here on the side, you can see the LiPo battery. Unfortunately, it's glued in, so you can't really take it out without the risk of damaging the battery. It's clearly not intended to be replaced once the battery dies or you have some issue with it. So let's uh, remove these screws and take out the fan and the PCB and let's see what we find. When removing the screws, you should be aware that since the battery is soldered to directly to the board, you could easily short it out any place. So there's no obvious way to disconnect the battery apart from desoldering it or cutting the wires, which is also not a great thing. But yeah, we now remove the screws so we can remove the fan and the PCB, just like so. And as you can see, there's not really much to it. There seems to be some IC for charging purposes and also a single button with a microcontroller that just that changes the power output for the fan. This is a single-sided PCB, so no components on the other side. And both the battery and the fan are 
directly soldered on with some hot glue. The fan itself seems to be manufactured by a company named GDS Time. It's a brushless DC fan. It's a regular PC blower style fan. The dimensions for this one is 50 by 40 by 10 millimeters. So if you look it up on AliExpress or Alibaba, you can easily get a hold of this exact fan if you wish to either replace it or make a device of your own. Also for testing purposes, we'll measure out the voltage output that's being output to the fan. So we can compare the like the realistic one-to-one -to -one power output between the XFOG and the rich anti-fog unit. So we'll now turn it on on the high mode on the XFOG. And that's 3.91 volts. Now we turn it on on the medium setting, which results in 3.5-ish volts. And on the lowest setting, the XFOG runs on 3.3. Keep in mind that this fan is actually rated for 5 volts, but it's a pretty normal thing to undervolt the fan. As long as it spins, it's not a problem. And it was probably done just to reduce the overall noise of the device. So you can see the XFOG consists of very few parts. It's just a battery connected to a PCB that's connected to a fan and just a single button to control it all. It comes apart relatively easily, but it's not meant to be repairable. So it's pretty much a one-way ticket, to be honest. Even though the battery is glued in, let's see if we can try to remove it so we can see what capacity is it. And as we can see here on the actual battery itself, this one is 75, 20, 80, and this is 1,500 milliamp hours. Now that we've seen the insides of the XFOG, let's check out what's inside the Norwich Anti-Fog Unit. Here we have the Norwich Anti-Fog Unit, and for this one to take part, you'll just need a Phillips One screwdriver and some sort of pliers to help you along the way. But to start opening up this device, first thing you want to do is remove these two screws. Depending on how you glue the Velcro, you might need to trim that corner a little bit, but you can push the screwdriver in between, and that's perfectly fine. Next, you can go ahead and open up the cover. This just removes as one piece. And here we have the battery. As you can see, the battery itself is noticeably larger than the one in the XFOG. This comes out and there's a connector that you can disconnect. For this one, I suggest using tweezers to remove the connector. There we go, that's the battery. So this battery is named DTP140766. So usually these are dimension numbers and it's a 2000 milliamp hour battery. Here we have some sort of uh, adhesive tape or something. It's definitely put in place to just isolate the battery from the whole electrical circuit. It seems like you have to pry this one apart, which is eh, not great, but let's see how it goes. It seems like you can pry this one apart relatively easily. And just be aware of not breaking any wires from the fan. Like so. Oh, geez. So it seems like we <laughs> tore the sticker from the fan off. So let's see. Let's see what's under here. And as expected, this is also a fan made by the same company. So it's GDS Time, brushless DC fan. But this actually seems to be a slightly different model. So this is also a 5 volt version, but this one actually draws a bit more power. So it's a bearing sleeve fan. So I'm not entirely sure what that means, but so we'll stick it back on there. So to go a little bit further, it seems like you need to remove two screws from the PCB and then three additional screws that hold the fan and the fan shroud in place. Before we continue, we also want to remove the knob from the, the potentiometer. And there's actually a nut hidden behind here that holds the potentiometer in place from the top. This is also to prevent the water from seeping in through the top hole right here. We'll use some small pliers to just screw it open. There's a nut. There's also the washer. Now we can remove the PCB. There we go. So this one comes out like that. It's directly soldered to the fan, so we can't just put the PCB aside. And next we can go ahead and remove the fan. There we go, cheese. All right, so this is the case itself. Nothing too special about it. On top here, you can see the rubber buttons that act as a seal to prevent water from coming in. And also on the side, this one seems to be a bit squished, but it's still in place and works fine. And here's the clear LED indicator and also the rubber grommet for the USB-C. These two nipples on the side also seem to be 
a separate piece, but they don't really want to come out, so maybe they're glued in, not too sure. Let's now take a closer look at the fan shroud itself. So it seems like these are two separate parts. So this is actually the fan shroud that splits the airflow in two parts, as you can see right here. And here's the actual PCB of the device. As you can see, there's a lot more going on here compared to the XFOG. This is most likely just because they're using the USB-C connector and to support power delivery charging or to just extract five volts from the power delivery. They just have to use different ICs to do that. And they also obviously have the two buttons, the potentiometer. This potentiometer seems to be exact same one that's being used on the battle tank radios and on the top, the small turbo button. And the on the other side, there's not much going on there, just apart from the connection points for the fan and also for the battery. Let's do the same test as we did on the x -Fold. So let's connect the battery back up. We should be able to turn the device on. There we go. We've now set the power to the lowest possible one on the non-rich anti unit. And we seem to be running around 2.8 volts. So that's a bit lower than on the XFOG. So now we cranked up the power on the power dial to the maximum one. So let's see what's the maximum power output here. So we're looking at around 4.16 volts. So that's, again, that's much higher than on the XFOG. Well, 3.9 and 4.2 volts doesn't sound too much. There's actually a big difference in the RPMs in the fan if you compare the two. Now let's turn on the turbo mode and see what power output we get. On the turbo mode, it seems like we're getting 4.9 volts. So that's pretty much close to five volts, which is the rated power output on this fan. As you can see, it's noticeably louder, but after a while, it just goes back to the regular power output. Regarding the screws, we can see that the Norwich anti-fog unit only uses two types of screws, which is nice to see. These two are for the external case, and these five smaller ones are all for the internal components. So there's no real chance that you'll ever mix them up. But Norwich definitely gets bonus points for the repairability, as you can pretty much take everything apart easily, only apart from this one sticky double-sided tape thing. But that's easily removable, and you can replace it with your own. So in case the battery goes dead or the fan dies or whatever happens, most of the components are easily accessible and replaceable. So as we can see, both devices use very similar components. They use almost the exact same fan. So functionally, they're very similar, but obviously Novridge one provides a lot more functionality in terms of battery indicator, USB-C charging, and the potentiometer for actually adjusting the power. Apart from that, they're both almost the same. But in terms of repairability, the Norwich one definitely wins in my book, as you can pretty much fully disassemble and put it back together without doing any destructive work. Whereas on the XFOG, you actually have to pry the case open and you also have the battery glued in, which takes quite a bit of a struggle to get it out. It's clearly not meant to be opened. I'm sure some of you will be wondering how BB resistant are both of these devices. So that's exactly what we're gonna be testing here right now. We're gonna be using 0.25 gram BBs and we'll do a quick chrono, see what power output we're getting from this SSR port. We're running around 1.5 joules, which is a pretty normal power output at point blank distance. So let's go first with the XFOG. I had to use a bit of electrical tape to hold the lid in place since it's no longer attached to the whole unit. And I'm gonna be using a little bit of double-sided tape on the side so it doesn't fly away. So we'll do five shots directly at the XFOG at roughly 60 to 70 centimeter distance. Next up, we'll test the Norwich anti-fog unit. So let's take this bad boy out of the box and... Woo, damn, it got completely destroyed, as you can see right here. Well, now at least we know that there's one area where Norwich could be improving. And uh, that's definitely the material choice for this unit. While the likelihood of this happening, having repeated shots from a meter distance, 
It's not very likely from day to day, but this could definitely happen in indoors. Apart from the damage, well, the device actually still works perfectly fine. One tip I would have for you guys is the Novich unit comes with extra set of Velcros. So honestly, it's not a bad idea to just stick one on the front and just use like a large patch, which will look a lot nicer and could possibly save it from penetrating the box itself. And whatever they claimed on the Xbox website, I'm actually super impressed. As you can see, we got quite a few direct hits, so none of them penetrated the box. However, when we hit the actual adapter, you can see that there's a lot more flexing than there should be and there's something broken here. It's not completely broken, so it's still usable. So that's definitely a win here. But yeah, it's definitely not brand new. But as for the material, it definitely did the job much better. As we saw in the teardown, the battery life on both should be quite similar. However, it is important to note that on the Novridge, the battery life should be a bit longer. And as Novridge states on the website, it should last 10 hours on the minimum setting. One thing I noticed on the Novridge anti-fog unit is that even if the power is completely off, it tends to drain the battery a little bit when you leave it in the bag for a week or so. Keep in mind that both of these units can be run off a power bank in case your battery is on the low side. So that's not really an issue. For example, at Border Wars, I forgot to charge it overnight. So I just stuck my little power bank onto the helmet and plugged it in and I was able to run it the whole day. On the X-Fog, while I was using it, I did not notice such drain, but I still always check the battery. Plus it was really confusing to check the battery level with these two single LED indicators. So I always just plugged it in, made sure it's fully charged before going to game day. Now we'll try to test the devices and leave them overnight. The testing methodology we settled on is based on the performance testing we did with the flower on the table. It was clear that you could easily leave the Knobridge unit on the lowest setting and it was still plenty powerful for me to run the whole day without any fog whatsoever. However, when I was running the X-Fog, I often had to switch it into the high mode since there was a little fog starting to form. So we settled on running the X-Fog on the high setting and the Norwich on the low setting, because even then it was still same power or more powerful than the X-Fog. So we left these both running overnight and here are the results. Now look, patents have their place in driving innovation and protecting the intellectual property. If you've been to the X-Fog website, you'll probably know that they claim they have a patent pending on the product Yet, I haven't been able to locate the patent in question. Not only that, but the patent pending status is usually only granted for one to three years and in only rare and complex cases granted for five years or more. Yet, XFOG has been on the market for more than five years and they still claim it's pending. Look, I'm definitely not a lawyer and I might be missing some information here, but to me, combining a PC fan together with a battery seems like it wouldn't be eligible for a patent. Moreover, XFOG has been on the market for quite some time now and has been pretty much the only option for such a device, yet they still haven't bothered to make any significant improvements to their device, which I would say is down to the lack of competition. You have to remember that competition always drives innovation and ultimately results in more options and overall better product for the end consumer. We obviously shouldn't be supporting products that are cheap rip off the same exact thing. However, I don't think this applies in this case as Norwich has clearly put in a lot of effort to redesign the whole thing inside out. Not only that, but there have been many DIY projects trying to improve upon the XFOG concept, which clearly shows that there are customers who want a better device. Just because Apple invented the iPhone, that doesn't mean that they should have the power to be the only ones in the world to make a smartphone. While both of these devices have their shortcomings, Norwich Anti-Fog Unit is still the clear winner for me. It's more powerful with a bigger battery. It's a lot easier to adjust the power while it's on your back. Not to mention the fact that you can easily check the battery without the instruction manual. And obviously it uses USB-C, which is a must have for me personally, as most of my devices are USB-C. Obviously the anti-fog unit fell short on the impact resistance test, but Norwich has a good track record for providing spare parts. So I don't see a reason why they shouldn't be able to offer a spare case for like $5 a pop. I would also like to see a more universal mounting method for the Norwich anti-fog unit, such as the head strap that comes with the X-Fog. So this pretty much wraps it up. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments section below. I'll most likely have a pinned comment in case something important comes up or there are some updates to the story or if I just missed something. None of this would have been possible without your support. So if you're interested in some awesome accessories for your airsoft replicas, 
consider checking out our product down in the description below. It's Trudos.design. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.